yeah what's up everybody welcome to the show did you hear that yeah i was lit i'm here with danny palmer we're doing a podcast so what's new danny what's what's up with you what's up bro i just got back from spin the ping pong bar on park and 23rd oh yeah i know that place Place that's right near where i live i don't know if you want to talk about so have you been following this johnny depp trial yeah i mean i've just been following people follow it i haven't been like watching it personally how about you yeah i've been i've been following it i've been watching it um just like it where i have it on my phone and my earphones while i'm at work i mean honestly it's like one of the most entertaining things that either of them has ever done especially him i feel like i haven't really seen him in anything in years you know what i mean they so it's kind of like he found you know hollywood kind of canceled him like they wouldn't release any of his movies but he kind of found a way a way around it you know like because now he's kind of in a roundabout way like on the one of the most popular streaming shows out right now you know yeah isn't he kind of a sympathetic figure too at this point yeah everyone's sort of on his side i i think it's because everyone you know everyone has known him who he was for so long and he seems like i feel like he's a very like beloved celebrity like he he never really did anything wrong you know what i mean like he never pissed off anyone so and she hasn't been around that long and uh she seems really i mean she does seem crazy like and i don't know that she's she's kind of doing this thing where she's trying to pass herself off as like this huge victim you know like according to her it's just like every night he just punched her in the face i just kind of i don't really know what johnny depp's like behind the scenes but i don't think he doesn't seem like he's punching everyone in the face every night you know yeah i don't know right and then there they had a thing yesterday where they were like she's like yeah, he punched me in the face like this one time like 10 times in the face and like he split my lip and then they have like you know, and then Johnny Depp's lawyer is like, okay, here's a picture from the next day, you know, after you, you said that happened. And she's just like at a premiere, like, you know, looking fine. And she's like, yeah, I have makeup on. And it's like, but I mean, they're like, you said you thought your nose was broken. Makeup can't make your nose not look broken, you know? So <laughs> right. Um, that's kind of, and I think he's like dating his lawyer now. His lawyer's kind of hot, this chick. How do they pinpoint when, what night he allegedly punched her to like figure out the party she went to the next day? Like, how do they pinpoint it like that? I think there was just a few. I don't know. I think that, you know, she testified certain time, like certain events, like maybe a trip they took to, you know, Europe or something that they were maybe there for like a premiere or something or I, I don't know she just uh, gave okay. dates that makes sense she gave she and then there was one where they're like here's you the next you know she's like yeah and he punched me in the face like 10 times and you know and i was bleeding from the lip and then they're like here's a picture from you the next day and then she just looks fine and then um she uh she just doesn't look very upset or oh and also this is a big thing like you know that they brought up he wears rings all the time he always wears these really big bulky rings and the lawyer was like so johnny depp always has these huge metal rings on right she's like well yeah pretty much and then she's like and then he punched you in the face 10 times with those rings and then there's no marks <laughs> so um and she's doing this weird thing she looks at the jury all the time which is kind of I don't know if she was, I guess it's a deliberate thing, but it's kind of weird. She's like trying to like win them over with her, her eyes. I mean, I guess she's trying to like be personal with them to kind of like set up a rapport, but it's like weird. Cause it's like, like, say you're me, like, like you see me, how I'm looking over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this boring you? <laughs> <laughs> I yawn a lot. <laughs> and, um, and like the lawyer will be like, because the lawyer's like too, she has to look left to see the lawyer. And then the lawyer will ask her a question. And then she just turns completely to the right and answers it like for everything. Like, so your name's Amber Heard, right? And then she's like, correct. Just looking over. Like, it's like weird. Like, I'm sure the jury's like, what are you fucking, maybe she's like, um, she's probably looking at the dudes on the jury to like make them be like, oh God, she's, she's in, I got a shot with Amber Heard. And I mean, all you need is one dude who thinks maybe Amber Heard is into him, and that's that's it. 
Um, yeah, well, she's the defendant, right? So the onus is on the prosecutor to, if there's reasonable doubt that she's guilty, then they have to acquit her, right? Well, it's defamation. Or is it civil or is it criminal? It's um, it's it's civil because okay. yeah, it's like it's defamation. She's he's suing her for fifty million dollars. Um, and uh, I don't think she has fifty million dollars. Um, so I think this is like a big deal to her. Like she's really going for it. You know, what I mean, like she's really putting on this huge performance. Um. But, like financial life depends on it basically even though i don't even know if she would end up having to pay there's another weird thing too where like she got like seven million dollars in the divorce which doesn't sound like that much i mean it does but you know in california you, you're entitled to like half of their money so um like you know steven spielberg he was like married to i think amy irving and like she got this insane divorce settlement because in california you have to give them like half of your so amy irving got like a 200 million dollars or something in the divorce that's um, crazy dude that's so, so amber heard, amber heard got like seven which, which which is amazing that sounds like shitty and then um <laughs> she says she gave it to charity but then they kind of like took her to task with that because they're like you said you donated it to charity she's like that's right i pledged it and they're like, but you didn't give it to them. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I pledged it. And basically that means like I said I was going to give it, but then I just didn't give it. So she's like, it's coming. Well, they're like, but you you didn't give it to them. No, I pledged it. They're like, but that's not giving it to them. <laughs> yeah. Like what are the terms of the pledge if she actually did that? That she'll give it in like X number of years or something? I don't know. It sounds like she just, I think what they were get going for or getting at was that like she said on interviews, she was like going to give the money to charities and then just never did it. Just was doing it to like look good. And I'm sure she's, I mean, you know, she did that whole thing where she was like, I don't want any of his money. I don't want any of it. I'm giving it all to charity. It's like, why? You know what I mean? If like, if he beat the shit out of you for years when you want some money, you know, that happens a lot where yeah. people are like, I don't want the money. I don't want it. When it's like a lot of money. Yeah. Um, it's like, do you actually not want it? Come on. You want it. <laughs> just keep some of it. Keep like, keep like 2 million, give like 4 million to charity. I don't know. It's just like, I don't really, I, I think she's lying. I, I think that, you know, I was kind of on her side a little bit. I was, you know, listening, but it just, she's just too much. Like, um, she just, she's trying to act too innocent. Like, it's like, basically she did nothing wrong. It's always him and he's crazy. And, and then they have recordings of her and she just sounds crazy. You know, have you, you've, you know, you've dated a lot of women. So like, you know, like, have you you've i'm sure you've dealt with a woman who was kind of a little loopy right have you ever had that <laughs> but i mean you know because uh, yeah, when you're when you're younger you don't really experience it yet like you don't really know it take you have to kind of experience it to like to see it you know did you ever have a really bad experience with one yeah definitely you know it's not multiple sure. like <laughs> i'm like, not saying that they're bad or wrong i've just had bad experiences yeah <laughs> you haven't had it, you haven't dealt with anyone that was like you were like whoa that, who seemed kind of like unstable like emotion I, yes i have and can you tell like what's something they did is what that was kind of like a red flag was, was there what like have you ever had that where you're dating someone and then they do something early on and you're like whoa this is not this isn't gonna be good we have this is i have to get out of this i'm trying to think i mean yes but i'm to pinpoint an example of that I'm having a hard time with. I have to think about it. Like, I've definitely dealt with. Well, I mean, they never wh take a whenever shit I in do this, I, what? They never took a shit in your bed. Yeah, nobody ever did that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I just think about like arguments I've had where it kind of it was like very intense. But I guess I can't say like, oh, that girl's crazy, and I'm not. Oh, there was one girl that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I what did she do? She just like had she's sex very with like. You? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, dude, you're crazy. That's irrational behavior. <laughs> what is wrong with this chick? <laughs> well, one time she came, I don't know if I should talk. Well, whatever. She, one time she came into a room 
and my friends were in the room and she took her scarf off and like just threw it in front of them on the floor like this big theatrical performance and they didn't know who she was and they just looked over her like what who is this person like what are you doing and it's like i mean i think she was gonna like a little bit drunk but like it was just like not that's typical, it not normal behavior <laughs> Wow, you've really uh, had a pretty charmed life, if that's the worst yeah, I guess. thing. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm thinking about her listening to being like, you asshole. One time a girl came in and took a scarf off dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But there was wow, no context like a monster. to it. What? There was no context to it. Yeah, I've had worse than that. What have you, you had? had? I've, I've had, like, I've run the gamut of just, like, and, and I think what was interesting about it is, like, when I was younger, I didn't really, I hadn't experienced it. And so you don't really have, you, you don't have any experience of it. So you don't have anything to, you don't really have perspective. But then when you do run into it a little bit, that's when you're like, like, so now when I hear stories about like Amber Hurt, like I can believe it. Cause I've, I've encountered, and it's not just women. I mean, I'm just saying I've experienced it in dating women. Like some people are unstable. Some, some people really have like mental health problems. And um, I've had right. just people, you know, like um, they, they brought it up today that she would like incessantly text him. Like he would try and like be like, they had a recording of him. Like, like, look, I need, a, I need my space. Like, li just leave me alone. I think we need like, I need some time on my own. And she just wouldn't let him go. And then like kept, like I've had people text me incessantly, which is like, that's you know that's not normal yeah that's like uh obsessive behavior i mean obviously but yeah i mean it's weird like when someone just keeps texting and you're like what are you doing like i'm i'm doing so like i've had that where you're like that this is not normal um was she mad at you or was it just like coming from a needy place or yeah both? mad at me um or did something and was like trying to apologize and would send these like weird texts that were just like, um, just bad things. Like, uh, just the, the, if someone, if you text someone like more than three times, I mean, that's, you know, in like a day and they're not getting, it's just, that's a little loopy. And you don't want to date someone like that where you're like, Oh, cool. So you're just going to text me anytime that you're, you don't know where I am. Yeah, that's just like overbearing and it's just too needy. You can't, you gotta like have some like pride and dignity. You can't just be like, ooh, 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 like 19 texts in a row and then think that they're gonna like respect you and the relationship that you have together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You have to have some self pride and dignity, even if, even if you're right, even if you, are the right person in the argument that you can't handle it like that or the person's going to think you're crazy and they're going to stop texting you back. Yeah. And dudes do it too. I, I, I've heard yeah, exactly. checks. Dudes do it too. I feel like a lot of dudes do it because they don't, again, they don't know what they're doing. So they, they're needy and they're, then they, and then they scare. And what people don't realize is it's counterintuitive. It just scares the person away. Cause you're like, you know what like what they're like what especially a woman i think it's so easy if you're a woman and like with dating someone new i think that's the thing women deal with a lot is like they'll meet a guy the guy will just text them over and over early on and then they get scared you know what i mean yeah i think that's the thing that, that like i think guys deal with it but i think women deal with it more when they're out have to go out dating i think th there's kind of a wariness of like is this guy going to like go nuts if I don't show him the attention he wants? You know what I mean? Cause I think that's like a risk. Like you don't know if a dude's going to start stalking you, you know? Yeah. Like for a guy with a girl, you're like, Oh, this girl's bothering me. She's obsessive. She's crazy. But you don't think she's going to like kill you. I mean, it's unlikely for a girl. She's got to think about, is this guy going to like harm me? Right. It's more, there's more of a chance. I mean, a woman can do that, but you know, yeah. it's definitely not as like common. And right. so I think that they, cause I know dudes and they've been like, yeah, and she like didn't get back to me. You know, they went out there like for like three weeks and then, and then, then I, I kept texting her and I'm like, why? Like, why are you texting her over and over? Just like, I guess she doesn't want to talk to you. Right. You don't even, you barely know the chick. Yeah, it's driving her apart. All she's doing is showing her friends those texts and, and her friends being like, yeah, he's crazy. That's all that's happening.
Yeah. Or they're showing the guy that they're banging now the text. Jesus. Because <laughs> I've had I've had it. I've gone when I was going out with women, like they'd be like a lot of times we like, look at this guy, he keeps texting me. And I'd be like, Oh yeah, he seems like a fucking loser. Um you know, they're, and they're weird. They're like, come on, like we could have been something. You know, this will be dudes that did they went out like four, like three times, you know. And it's just like, dude, what the fuck? You're living in New York. Like, you can't go outside. Yeah. There's literally millions of other people. Yeah. So um, it's like that that cliche about, like, if you want to hold on to something, it's like the grains of sand in the palm of your hand. If you squeeze, the sands will go out of your hand. But if you keep your hand open, the sands will stay. Like, you can't force someone to like you. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. took me a while to, to realize. When you're younger, I think you're more into that, right? Yeah. Like, younger, you're like, I could get her to like me. If I do this, I'll, she'll like me. Or, like, you know, and you're like, and then older, you're like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you all, who cares? Actually, yeah, the, more the, the older I get, the more I'm like, I don't even want them to like me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you want them to like you? Well, I think I went through a phase of, like, sometimes it would seem like it was going to be a hassle if they were if they liked me because then like you know i maybe i didn't want to settle down you know i don't know i think it was uh, just yeah. different it was like i wasn't like i have to have them like to like i have to i need them to like me i was like i think i was like yeah it'd be cool if they liked me but i mean if they don't i don't really i mean whatever i can't there's nothing i can do this is it so like and also, like, I think I got more like, I think you're wrong. So, <laughs> like, I, you know, I like I, I've met a lot of dudes in the world, and they're all pretty much awful. So it's like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that was you're not going to beat this. Well, I mean, I'm not even saying I'm not even saying I'm that great, but I just think what's out there is so bad that it's like, for the most part, that. That's always been my attitude. It's like, look, you can do better. You know, go for it. I don't know what to what to tell you. Um, You're welcome to try. Yeah. But I mean, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, it's like that should have been this like ideal relationship where they had everything. You know what I mean? They're both like rich and good looking and you know what I mean? And charismatic and they have 19 houses. And I mean, they were fucking miserable. They were just punching each other in the face every night it's like <laughs> and they read these texts and it's like you cunt i hate you you bitch i'm gonna fucking you know and it's just like jeez like why are you guys even dating why are you i mean they were married it's almost like at some point they need that drama and that tension and that like connection you know because i mean as bad as a fight as you can get on with somebody at least you're connecting with them over the argument versus not versus like not talking to anybody, you know, not sitting in your apartment by yourself in silence. Yeah. You're fighting, you're engaging with somebody. You're not by yourself. I just feel like if I had been in that position, like that Johnny Depp was in, I started dating Amber Heard and I had like 19 houses and my own island and every woman wa wanted to sleep with me. Like, I feel like if like three months in she was being bitchy, I'd be like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to go. This is fun. This isn't working out. Like, I wouldn't be like, we have to get married. It's like a good question. Really, Why really, do you think that he wanted to stay with her? I think you're right. I think may, there must be some guy, you know, they're he probably, they talk about in the trial that he grew up in like an abusive household. I think his mom was really abusive. I think there's something to that. Like mm. that's what he thought love was, was like a woman who like abused him or I don't know, maybe, she, you know, huh. everyone was probably, everyone's so obsequious to him. Maybe he finally met a woman who likes, it was harder. It was kind of a challenge and, um, also, like it, it sounds like he's just drunk and on drugs all the time. So I guess he's not making great decisions. Even though like is not making great decisions seem to have worked out pretty good for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. She, you know, it's that thing. Maybe she was cool at first, um, and then like, and I think she is cr shitty and probably crazy. But I guarantee. I mean, I don't think it was. I think he has some issues too. I don't think it's just like. He was this complete, you know, like victim himself. I mean, he sounds like he's like a drunk. So I think, you know, if you're dating a dude who's just wasted all the time and like screaming and, you know, 
I don't know. I, that, that's probably not the easiest thing to be in, too. Have you ever been in a relationship where you guys you fought all the time? Yeah. Really? Like badly? Yeah. Like, yeah, we just there were just certain core issues that we couldn't get past. And... What was his name? <laughs> there we go. This guy's good. <laughs> Tip your waiter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom with the go-to. <laughs> The classic go-to. He's like, you know what? I'm going to throw in a joke right here. I did it. I think I'm good at pulling off, though, those, like, the cheap, obvious jokes. Yeah. You're like, I'm being ironic. I don't really. Because it is, yeah, I'm doing it in a way that, like, I'm not acting like I just came up with it, you know? Right. It's clearly a stupid joke, and I'm aware of it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It'd be interesting to see a, a therapist sit down with Johnny and Amber separately and then hear their insights on it versus the trial, which is contingent on, or, you know, focused on getting a result and determining a certain assessment. It'd be, I think it'd be more interesting to hear the like underlying psychological reasons and trauma and childhood and like what, what yeah. all is making them do that instead of who's at fault? Like what are the underlying reasons here? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, there there had to have been a lot of red flags early on with her. But I think it's a thing of he, you know, he seemed I don't know if you he he seemed like very far gone. He's one of those guys that like had everything and he was surrounded by a lot of enablers because he had a lot of he like surrounded himself with people that were going to like, you know, let him do what he wanted to do because everyone kind of wanted to stay in his circle. So I think. Because you remember the stories with him where he was just like, you know, he first of all, I, apparently he lost like seven hundred million dollars. That's another like, what are you talking about? Like he blamed his lawyers and accountants for like stealing his money. And then um, these expenses were coming out where he was like spending like fifty thousand dollars a month on red wine. And like he spent like a million dollars like to uh, blow like, you know, um to shoot Hunter Thompson's ashes out of a cannon. Or oh, something. that's right. Like really weird things like that. So clearly he had like kind of gone off the DB, but like he was just not making, I don't know. He's one of those guys who like, he, he sort of fell into this, to his career and then everything just worked out amazing. And ever and then, um, you know, it, it just kind of, it, it kind of goes to show you, you, you know, you look at people and you're always like from afar and you'd be like, Oh, their life must be so great. But, you know, everyone has their own problems, you know, in in different ways. And even he kind of like, I don't know, he had a lot of things. He clearly wasn't that happy. If, you know, he's just wasted all the time. And now I I don't know. And like, he can't work anymore or something. And, but do do you get the idea? I mean, like, I don't know Johnny Depp clearly, but does he look like a guy who's just beating the shit out of women all the time? No. I feel like I you mean, would have I seen. Guess it, there's no way to tell, but but I mean, you would have seen like, like a glimpse of it. I think in his public persona, a little bit. Like I don't know, maybe not. Bill he doesn't Cosby, have any like flashes of anger during the trial. No, he's actually really done a good job of remaining cool and calm. But because I mean, like Bill Cosby and all that stuff, like those guys who got ruined. Like later on, it was like, oh yeah, there were stories about him for years. But Johnny Depp, you never really hear anything beyond this. This is like the only story you ever hear. Yeah. Unless, you know, like they interviewed other women he dated and they're all like, yeah, no, he was never, even though he, one thing, uh, do you remember when he would always like destroy hotel rooms? That was like a big thing he did. Oh, I thought that was just Charlie Sheen. I didn't know Johnny Depp was doing that too. Yeah. Johnny Depp, like he kind of, it almost became like a gag with him because he was, it wasn't like he would hit people. He, it was just, he would get mad and destroy. I mean, I can only na- think of one time specifically, or he'd get like in fights with paparazzi and stuff. And he, but you know, it just shows how much time, how much things have changed, you know, cause he would like destroy hotel rooms and like fight paparazzi and go on like talk shows and talk about it. And it was like funny. And uh, you can't really do that anymore. I feel like everyone gets mad. Um, right. Why? Because it shows that you have like anger and violence problems. And it's not just this, oh, I'm a crazy Hollywood celebrity. It's like, whoa, there's a deeper problem here. And it's probably going to be lead to violence towards other people too. 
Is that what I you just mean? Feel, yeah, I just feel like it's not as accepted anymore. You know, like, oh yeah, isn't that funny? Destroying like, hotel rooms used to be accepted. Yeah, I mean, I think it was. I think it was kind of thought of as oh, like stars. like a yeah. rock star thing. Like, true, oh true, true. man, like they're so cool. Like they just destroy hotel rooms. Um. Yeah. But he, there were a few stories of him doing that. So that's, but it was always like, he would always say it was under the uh, guys or whatever. It was just kind of like, he would clarify, like he just got mad and destroyed the room. He didn't hit anyone, but um, I don't know. That's kind of unhinged a little bit. I don't it does know. make you wonder, are, yeah, are, is, is someone actually able to relegate that behavior to strictly attacking objects and not touching people? Are right. you sure? Are we sure? Like you're in this drunken rage and you're like destroying things. And Everything like, but a person. Yeah, and then the person is in the way. And you're like, oh, oh wait, no, 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 that's too far. Nope. You stop I, um, your fist. Like, it's like, no, I could see you just kind of losing it. Like whatever's in your, in your way. And also that doesn't sound like an enjoyable person to be dating, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> But, I don't want to date anybody that destroys property, dude. That's not fun. Like on a regular basis, but it's also like why you're so mad. Like you, your whole life is living in luxury hotels, and it's just you're just gonna just like I've never. Have you ever destroyed your room anywhere you were ever? No, never once. <laughs> have you? Ever why would been, I do that? <laughs> but I, yeah, I know. Like, have you ever needed to? Or no. I don't I want to like... destroy the room that I'm in. I want it to be nice. <laughs> I like to be around in nice surroundings, not but I, I ripped think... up shit. But I guess. Oh, wait, they... I did do one thing once. <laughs> what? What? When you set fire to that orphanage? Yeah. Well, when I was in college, we would get fruit from the cafeteria and then we, we would throw it against the the like main entrance door on our floor. <laughs> and my roommate Tim would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? You live here. We we're like, dude, it's hilarious to throw fruit at the door. <laughs> Like of the dorm, the dorm room like, or your room? It's kind of like a hotel room hallway. So uh, not yeah. we wouldn't throw it at our, our individual dorm rooms, but at the main door entrance to the floor, we just bombard. That was like a metal door. We would bombard that thing with fruit, which Why? was great. Because it's great to watch fruit smash. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, we live here. It's going to stink in the morning. Like we didn't think that far. Was that when you were you were first thinking about comedy when you were in your Gallagher phase? Yeah, right. Were you were you, were you into Gallagher? It sounds like you might have been. I mean, I don't I don't think that motivated us, but maybe, <laughs> maybe on a subconscious level. I mean, we're like Gallagher. I don't know. I think the um, like I I've like um kicked things so, like you know when I've gotten really really angry and frustrated. You know, but like, like I once kicked like my garbage can in my apartment and like dented it really bad. That's pretty um, harmless. Yeah, nothing like I, I wouldn't destroy the whole room. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess th that's the thing, though, is that in his life, he's just going from luxury hotel to a luxury hotel and he's just kind of can get away with whatever he wants. I don't know. It's just once like you do that and you get away with it that's like a bad precedent because then it's like oh i can just whenever i get mad all i have to do is just destroy a hotel room like that's a good you know that's a good answer solution um yeah because the the, the cost of the repairs means nothing to him if he spent right. 100 million dollars to shoot remains out of a cannon like what does a hotel room matter <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah, it's just like who cares Fuck i guess it. you just kind of have to learn early on like when you're just in a regular life like oh yeah i can't just if i'm mad i can't just destroy rooms <laughs> you know like yeah i like watched what sorry i watched joel Embiid in a post-game interview the uh 76ers guy and he got he flicked off the crowd uh i, I forget where it was maybe in boston because they they booed him when he got hit. He got like elbowed in the eye and he's on the ground. And he's bleeding out of his eye. And then the crowd booed him. He, he flicked the crowd off and he's like, okay, I'm going to get fined $50,000. He goes, I'll do one charity event that'll pay that off. I don't care. And it's like, yeah, makes sense, dude. Yeah, totally. When it's like money it really is like not an issue. Cause like for him, you know, that's why I think it's funny in the NBA and all that, when all that stuff happens, they always make a big deal of fining the players. You know, they'll be like, he was fined $20,000. Like, oh, okay. Right. That's not, I'm, that's really going to, you know, affect him. It's like a parking ticket. It's like me, it's literally like me getting a $50 ticket and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I'll never park again. 
Yeah, and um, if, if you rip up the hotel room, then the maid and the maintenance staff, they have to work to clean that up and fix it. That's inconvenience people. If you flick off a crowd, nobody gets hurt. Yeah. I mean, not really. Nothing gets damaged. Yeah. No I think that's what I involved. mean, though. I think, I think there's a different perception now of that kind of behavior. Like, when we were growing up, it was like, oh, isn't that cool? Like, it's kind of funny that they do that. But now I think it's not looked at that way i think it's looked at as like really inconsiderate and shitty and like childish and stupid and like like this whole trial i think why a lot of people are following it is because it started out as like what is this this is so stupid you know and it's kind of like watching this spectacle of these two celebrities who like are taking themselves way too seriously and don't really have a perspective of what they are you know what i mean like he's like mm. i'm suing her for 50 million because she said and i mean I, I guess it like hurt his reputation but the thing is like she, he's suing her because of some op-ed that she wrote like six years ago i never even heard of the op-ed you know and he's like she she put that out there and it ruined my name and it's like well now now i do know about the op-ed because you're making such a big deal of it so yeah, but I mean, in his defense, that could have cost him uh, acting jobs because I I'm sure it, that yeah, you know, the people that write Variety and the agents and the managers in Hollywood, they definitely read that. No, I, th I think it did. But the other thing is, like, you've already made like nine hundred million dollars. Like, I don't really know what. Just maybe retire from acting. You know, you're sixty years old, and then like, you know, he's like, they won't put me in the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and I'm like, you've already done five of them. Like, they each paid you a hundred million dollars. Like, what? Did you didn't put anything to the side from that? <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't have just been destroying hotel rooms all the time, you know, and and shooting ashes out of a cannon. But I, like I said, I think it's been like a lot of people are following because I think it's like a distraction that from because the world is like a nightmare right now it's just everything is horrible so this is kind of like a less heavy story that you can people can kind of sit back and be like look at these idiots it's so stupid like they're morons um yeah it's like tiger king it's like these people are insane yeah it's like tiger it's i mean it, that's what's funny about it is it is that's where we are in entertainment and tv is like the line because for a while, like Tiger King is a good example because it's like that was a, a documentary. It was real, you know, but now we've gotten to the level where like this is like another OJ thing where it's like the trial itself is just a show that people are watching. And not only is it a show on like TV, it's it has two huge stars in it, you know, like movie stars. <laughs> yeah on tv on a streaming show so it's kind of like oh man they really got these you know they got some really big names for this wait um, can i defend can i defend one thing about johnny depp because you were saying that you know you've already got 900 million dollars what do you care about this next movie but like but in his defense like maybe he wants to remain relevant and continue to act and he gets a lot of personal satisfaction and meaning fulfillment out of continuing to grow his abilities as an actor and he can't do that without new you know vehicles to act in no you're right but he he is still acting a little bit it's just kind of not as big you know the career is not as big as it was he's still like he, you know he still does movies every, i mean he not as much you're right i mean you, you know I, I do think when at first i was like this is so dumb that he's doing this because it's like a waste of time and money and but now that i'm watching it he is kind of able to get his because i had always peripherally heard this story but he's kind of getting his side of the story out more and he's kind of changing the narrative because she is coming off like a little unstable it's like she's coming off as kind of a liar a little bit and i think it's after today uh, his his lawyer did cross-examination of her and kind of made her look really bad and then after the cross-examination was over johnny depp like hugged her and like you could tell he hugged very, her yeah it looks there's already a rumor that they're dating it looked very like intimate um oh, i gotta say that chick dude she must be so fucking stoked like she's fucking landed johnny depp you know <laughs> She's just this like lawyer. I mean, she's probably like, you know, she's like a young, you know, up and coming lawyer. And it's like, oh, now now I'm dating Johnny Depp. Like, that's got it. You know what I mean? That's kind of cool. Oh, she's on his defense team or on his yeah. prosecuting team. And so it makes sense that she really went hard after Amber Heard. And it's like almost when you when you when you narrow it down, it's like 
Johnny Depp's new woman, like going after the woman that tried to ruin him. So it's kind of like, don't you fuck with my man. I'm going to get you and like make you and ruin you. So that's kind right. of, it had a feeling of that a little bit. So it, it adds more drama to it. Like that's another cool angle. Like, and he's dating the lawyer and like, she's going like, to get uh, revenge on, on the other woman that tried to ruin him. Are, are there ethical um, considerations that the bar would impose upon lawyers? And I um. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, th there are situations where you can do it, I think, but it's usually frowned upon. So maybe, I think they're kind of maybe not admitting it. Um, I, you know, I have to wrap this up. We have to wrap this up in about a minute and a half. Yeah. We have two minutes, two and a half minutes, right? Is yeah. this because of the 40 minute time limit? I guess so. I didn't know dude, this was like a new thing. Zoom's fucking us over, dude. They are, but th this is new. They didn't used to do this. I know. I think, you know what? I bet their revenue is going down because the pandemic has eased and yeah. now they're like fuck this and we need more paid accounts you guys okay. are only getting 40 minutes so it's now. a two minute warning lightning round two minute okay. warning dude all right so ask ask any questions <laughs> what <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> this just feels like when there's two minutes left I, I get a lot of anxiety when like i'm timed when things are timed and time's running out all right i have a question what, have okay. you taken any way any insights about your own life from watching this trial um yeah, just that um, I I, th I think it kind of represents like uh, the death of like celebrity culture in a way and like how, um, you know, our, our culture used to be, I mean, it still is, but was very obsessed for a long time, mainly in the 90s, 80s, 90s, the thousands with like celebrity culture and like, look at their lives, they're so great. But then like now that you're able to kind of see behind the curtain a lot more with like, you have more access to celebrity culture. It's like, they're kind of messes in their own ways behind the scenes. So it's kind of like an interesting thing to be like, oh, like no one, you know, no one is immune from unhappiness, you know? Yep. So it, it doesn't come from those things. It really, this sounds like a stupid, like not stupid. Like, I think that's true. It's like the happiness comes from you, not from like the thing. Cause these people, John, they seem miserable and they have everything and they were just screaming and breaking things. And, you know, it's like, yeah, they're not like so counting their money. You know, yeah. like, oh, we're, we're, they're not like Scrooge McDuck just diving into their money. It would happen. Yeah, exactly. They're, Which is they're what livid you with each other. Yeah, yeah. Over a minor thing or whatever yeah. it is. Okay. So, yeah. um, thanks for Danny Palmer in. NYC <laughs> and, uh, Tom McCaffrey and, uh, check me out on YouTube. I, I do do videos about Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial every other day. Oh, yeah. Those are funny. Um, so, yeah. Send me the